So you're on tour right now, and we've, we've done really well to get you on the one day that you happen to be in Auckland. Where have you come from? Directly, I've come from Kazakhstan, which was the end of the second leg of the tour, which was mostly through the Americas, through North and Central America, and through the Caribbean. But at the end of the tour, they sent us up to Poland and then across to Kazakhstan. Wow. And now yeah. tell me about this amazing tour. OK, so we're taking Hamlet. When I say we, uh, Shakespeare's Globe Theatre in Bankside in London. And um, I'm part of the company that is taking Hamlet to every country on the planet over two wow. years. Every country on the planet. How many countries is that? 205. Wow, I yeah. learned something. <laughs> 205 well, countries. Yeah, we started... Our first performance was in London um, on Shakespeare's 450th birthday, April 23 this year. And um, the tour will end, back, will end back at the Globe um, on his death day, um, April 23, on his 400th anniversary of his death wow. back at the Globe. That must be a huge undertaking never been done before it's, yeah. yeah it's um it's pretty crazy to be part of so we've done 50 countries so far we're a quarter of the way through so tell me how do you handle this the schedule which must be completely grueling how do you maintain your energy and, and keep in top gear all the time i have no idea um, <laughs> um the rest of the company are amazed because i can sleep anywhere yeah. and i can power sleep i guess and it's a technique that i learned from my grandmother when we were kids back in the in the late 50s early 60s and um, she used to put us to sleep with meditation um, techniques basically and she'd pop us on the back of a dragonfly and take us over a hill and down into a creek or you know hover around you're the, doing it to me now stop yeah. stop it <laughs> and so I can just drop off and and whisk away for half an hour and that re-energizes that helps yeah. It's, got, a, it's, got amazing that, yourself. Um, it's amazing that impact that just just by thinking like literally I just went off on a dragonfly when you said yeah. that it was beautiful it's the most restful part of yeah. my day the, the part that I didn't say is my grandmother and her sisters and cousins used to put us all all of me and the cousins to sleep in the afternoon so they could play cards and drink sherry <laughs> <laughs> I realized much later so tell me a bit more about your upbringing Okay, so I was born in 1954, so I've turned 60 this year. Wow. And, um, you look awesome. What face cream do you use? Uh, <laughs> face uh, moisturizer made by my wife, a lavender ointment. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there Married you go. a hippie girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't, I, thank you. <laughs> I don't, I feel 60, at least. Um, That's because you're on tour. <laughs> yeah. So I was born in '54 in um, in the Hokianga in a in a in a different time zone really. So there was no electricity then. The, our village Motukraka you couldn't get to by road. There were no roads, so the access was by water or by horse or by foot. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I was born into that kind of upbringing, so and then was part of the. Urban, urban drift in the 60s when our family came to Auckland. So how did you get from that to the incredible success you've enjoyed? I mean, you're probably probably most well known for Whale Rider and Insatiable Moon. How, how did you get from that upbringing to that kind of celebrity status, if you like? Um, perhaps right from the beginning, like when performance was a big part of our, our upbringing. So on Sunday evenings, so I grew up in a Catholic area and Sundays was all about family and about the church and the marae. And on Sunday evenings, it was the time of the kids and we would perform and my grandmother would dress up as Charlie Chaplin and be the MC. And we would each have to do either a few group items or to entertain the elders. Did you, did you know that you wanted to be an actor when you grew up? So actor, director, the whole thing? No, I didn't. I was shy, believe it or not, yeah. until puberty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was incredibly shy, and so it was the furthest thing from my... Although I was interested in music and I was interested in art. Um, so I was thinking about teaching and all of those sorts of things, which, which were popular yeah. back in the late 60s when I was at college. Um, and it wasn't until I went and saw Hamlet 
as it were, at the Mercury Theatre and uh, it was a life-changing experience and I came out and I knew that I wanted to be involved in performing arts because that had moved me so much. Tell me why, what was the thing that, that captured your imagination? Partly because Shakespeare hadn't spoken to me at all and then suddenly I realised that the power of performing arts in that a man who was living at least four centuries ago and on the other side of the earth, so from a different culture, from a different time, spoke to me directly. I saw on stage a story unfolding about a young man who saw corruption in his elders, who saw a rotten state. I was growing up in Ōtara. There was perhaps not corruption in our government, but we were living in what I considered a rotten state. Um, you know, the Māori protest movement hadn't taken off by then. There were things that were wrong with um, how we were, how we were, the conditions that we were living in now. Our language wasn't allowed to be spoken in the schools and so on and so forth. And, and that's what got to me. The themes of, of Hamlet just spoke to me directly and I thought, that's a powerful medium. I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favourite Shakespeare quote? We are such stuff as dreams are made on, which pretty much sums up my life. Yeah. Um, I've, I've gone ahead with dreams all the time. I, I was in London, the first time I was in London, and I visited the Globe before it even opened. And um, I was, and, and the next time I was in London, I visited the Globe uh, with my son and did the tour. And I turned around to him and I said, I'm going to work on that stage one day. And that was in 2007. It was just after the, the bombs on the train. It was a week after. It was the day that London stood still in memory of, of that terrible happening. And I was there with my youngest son and I said, I'm going to work on that stage. And in 2009, I was playing... Um, Friar Lawrence in Romeo and Juliet and did my first season there and that's been me all my life. I, I have dreams and I, I articulate them and I work hard at, at making them happen. Dreams don't just come true, they, they come true with a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice. So yeah, any, any young people with, with dreams need to need to just remember we are such stuff as dreams are made on. Thank you, that is great advice for everyone. Thank you so much, Ralph.